Hi everyone, good morning. This is Sarita from Harsha Trainings. Today's topic is case management in PEGA. Let's get into our session. Hi Harsha. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Shall we start? Yes. Explain the significance of case management in PEGA. The initial versions of PEGA has case life cycle being defined by workflows. And even now also they depend on workflows. But the workflows, uh, uh, by using workflows, defining case life cycle will be little uh, difficult for a business. And PEGA has come up in the later versions like 6.1 and later. They come up with a case management concept by creating the case type rule, which is going to uh, give a facility of defining the work object life cycle. And starting from PEGA 7, these case types, they have introduced case life cycle wizard. So the case life, using the case life cycle wizard, it is very easy to define the work object life cycle in the form of stages, processes and steps. And by using this particular case life cycle, even a business person, a business analyst also can easily define the work object life cycle by adding the uh, respective stages, processes and steps. And now the importance of this one is not only the uh, uh, it is very easy to define, but also at the time of case creation itself, like a case can be instantiated by using an email uh, notification or by uploading a file and even the locking mechanism handling and updating everything that is provided in the settings tab of the case life cycle and also during the processing of the case it is going to have the stages process and steps being displayed to the end users which will give a clear idea of what is been happening and what is, what has already happened and what is yet to happen all that uh, is going to clearly display to the end users so like this there are many advantages of using the case types over uh, regular uh, workflow design uh, in order to define the work object life cycle okay what are the differences between primary and alternate stages in case type and explain the purpose of alternate stage when we are designing a case in the case type we can add stages where we have primary and alternate stages and primary stages are the one where the case is going to go by a primary uh, processing like a happy path or maybe a regular processing that is going to be done uh, for the case and alternate stages are the ones where we add some uh, different secondary processing it is not only exception exception handling or something secondary processing let's say for example if we are going to process insurance policies when processing insurance policies uh, from collecting the customer data to providing the policy it is going to go through a regular process of primary stages and when in case if the customer uh, is going uh, let's say for example a customer who is taking the insurance policy is a high fi customer and the policy premium is too high in these cases if we wanted to go for a manual verification process and which is actually different from the regular process in regularly in regular processing automatically the approvals everything will be done but in this case, we uh, the case is going to jump to alternate stages. We can design alternate stages to have the uh, other uh, additional verification to be done and additional uh, steps needs to be taken care. And finally, again, the policy will be delivered. So the secondary path, which is actually not a regular model of transaction can be defined in the alternate stages. So PEGA has provided alternate stages a way of mechanism of defining or processing something which is odd than the regular processing. Okay. How a case gets created while we run a case type? Explain the back end process. Whenever a case type is being executed in the background, uh, there is a flow called PY start case that is going to get executed, which has an utility shape of calling an OTV activity PZ uh, uh, initialize uh, case. And the, the activity is going to call another uh, different activities like PZ initialize stage and PX uh, change stage activities. And now the case is going to get created the moment when the activity uh, when we run the case type PY start case flow gets executed and thereafter it is going to call the activity of PZ uh, initialize case processing and thereafter it is going to call another activity of initialize stage that is going to invoke the first stage. And after first stage is being executed, to go to the next stage, it is going to call the OOTB activity PZ change stage. And now in order to create the work object, there are OOTB activities that gets executed. The OOTB activities are, the first activity that gets executed is add. Add is going to call another activity add work. Add work in turn calls 
the OTP activity generate ID. When it comes back finally to add, it is going to call a save activity and a work commit activity. So these are the OTP activities that gets executed to create a case when we create when we execute a case type and the py start case is the flow which is responsible for creating or invoking all these activities. But starting from Pega 8.5, this py start case has been removed and directly when we run a case type, it is going to call the activities add add work generate ID save new and work commit. What is case dependency in case management and how to configure it? Whenever we have uh, like whenever we have case uh, cases being created like parent and child cases, we can have the parent case been waiting for the child cases to get resolved. Maybe one or more child cases to get resolved or to reach certain status. So we can make the parent case been wait by using a wait shape. There we have an option of case dependency to proceed forward. When case is at wait shape, it will be there in default at the rate pega.com work basket and waits there and once the respective case dependency action is being achieved that means let's say for example if i have chosen uh, like uh, this particular wait shape has to be completed like depending on like ch all child cases gets resolved then when we select that option the moment all child cases achieve the status of resolved completed or something related to resolve then automatically parent case gets released and it will move forward this is called case dependency by using white shape Okay, how to create multiple child cases from parent case? So, in a, from a parent case, when we have multiple child case types is been added. So, on the child case type, we have an option of instantiation. The child cases can be instantiated either manually or there is an automatic instantiation immediately when the parent case gets created or we can have conditions being added. So, when parent case is created and conditions are being met, then child cases will get created. Other than this, there is another option, another way, like uh, we have create case smart shape available. We can add a create case smart shape and call a child case there. And when parent case reaches the create case smart shape, one child case gets created. Suppose if we want to create the same case, uh, same child case of multiple cases, then in the create case smart shape, we have an option of create multiple child cases and select the case type and pass a page list parameter then it is going to create multiple child cases for a number of pages like page list has 10 pages then it will create 10 child cases okay we move on to next question what is the use of case match in case management so case match rule in pega has been introduced in order to find out the duplicate cases so whenever a case is being getting created we can identify with the same details if already there is an existing case available in prpc or not so if it is already available then the current case that we are creating is a duplicate case our process command will stop this and bring up all the duplicate cases that are already available in the system. In order to find out this, we need to use a flow shape called duplicate search. When we add a duplicate search flow shape, we can define the case match conditions. So now in the condition, let's say a straightforward condition when customer account is getting created in a bank is customer PAN card number. Whenever we are providing PAN card number, here in the condition we can give PAN card number is same. So if the PAN card number of the customer that we are entering now while creating the account is already present in the system in any of the cases, then it is going to consider this as a duplicate case and bring up all the uh, present uh, cases that are already available in the system. Other than this, there is one more option available that is called as weighted condition. In the weighted condition, we can have the condition defined more than one property. Let's say for example, customer first name is one property is same, last name is same and date of birth is same and uh, maybe the address or any other parameter we can choose. For each condition, we can give some weight value. Let's say, I, as I have added four properties, I am giving 25, 25, 25, 25 weight, total 100. And now out of these four, I can give a weighted condition value. Like if I have given weighted condition value as 75, which means that at least three of these properties are matching with the already present cases in the system, then it is going to be considered as a duplicate case. So this case match is going to help the business in order to find out duplicate cases and not to recreate the cases again and again for the same customer or for the same purpose. Okay, that is the advantage of case match. Okay, in a case type, I have an assignment. So how many ways we can route the assignment and what is business logic routing? Yeah, we can do routing and assignment in two different ways. Like routing can be done primarily, routing can be done to a single work list that means a dedicated operator or routing can be done for uh, into a work basket or work queue and there is an external routing is also available but uh, that is for external systems and apart from this there is one option called business logic in some situations uh, we are not pretty much sure whether to route to work list or work basket but there will be a condition 
if condition a is equal to b we have to route to work list or condition a is equal to c we have to route to another work list condition a is equal to d we may have to route to work basket like this we will be getting business requirement in order to satisfy this business requirement pega has provided an option called business logic there we can choose the decision tree rule and in the decision rule we can define the conditions and in the written value we can write the operator names or work queue names or work basket names then whenever the work object reaches the assignment decision tree gets executed when it is encountering with routing and the written value of the decision tree if it is work list it will get routed to work list if it is work basket it will get routed to work basket that is what a business logic routing let me ask you one scenario in an application three case types are there so is it possible to share the data from one case type to another case type i think like if the three case types are separate separate case types there is no way that we can share uh, directly sharing is not possible if it, if it is parent and child cases then parent to child data we can share but if it is all three different case types it is not possible we have to access the other case type rule uh, data by using its feature insk or pyid other than that there is no other book okay what is data propagation and how we can share the data from parent to child and child to parent data propagation is the concept of uh, like uh, serving the data or, uh, like copying the data from parent into a child case in the parent case type under settings tab we have the option of like we can click on data propagation and we can call the data transform there or we can directly choose the properties for a specific child case like it is like a property set that we do in a data transform then at the time the child case is getting instantiated data of the parent case will get copied into child case into the respective properties and now Uh, the other one which you have asked like copying data from child to parent is by default not possible but we can access the child case pgdinsk uh, like uh, uh, parent case pgdinsk from child case uh, uh, by using py work cover page so for every child case the parent case data will be available in the name of py work cover we can read the py id value from py work cover and we we have to open the parent case and update the modify the data update it back and in the mean in mean while we have to acquire the lock and release the lock but this is possible only when the parent case is not been locked other than this there is a flow shape available update case there we can open any case and update the data to other case whether it may be parent or other child but only condition is the other cases should not be opened and acquired with lock at the time uh, this activity is executing to update the other cases okay where can we see the relationship between parent and child cases yeah we can see the relationship between parent and child cases on the clipboard like in the parent case we have uh, under py work page of the parent case we have a ovotp value list property called px covered ins keys the px covered ins keys ovotp value list property holds the pj ins keys of all child cases so that is where we can find out what are the child cases of a specific parent and similarly if you go to one single child every child case will have a py work cover so on the the py work cover on child case is the py work page of parent case so if you open the py work cover there also we have px covered ins keys which tells what is its uh, parent case uh, what are the other child cases along with this child and the py work cover will have the pj ins key of parent case so anywhere being there at the parent or child we can find out what are all the childs what are all the children and what is what are the other children and the parent case we can find out that thank you for watching this video i hope you gain some knowledge on case management if you have scenarios or questions related to case management please post it in comment box we'll try to resolve the scenarios thank you for watching please subscribe to our channel